Hi folks, Michael here from Planet All and welcome back to our Growy Pro series. And today we finally are getting to the plants. Germination. So we are gonna go through a relatively basic germination setup, one that I've been using for quite a while, has served me very, very well. And just getting our plants ready and hardy enough to be transplanted into our recirculating deep water culture setup here is key. Weak seedlings make for a weak grow. It's not terribly complicated getting your seeds to germinate, but it's worth taking time for it. And if you've never done it before, there's enough steps that it really can feel a little bit overwhelming. So let's head over to the workbench. We're gonna go ahead and get the cultivator set up, get a few seeds in place, and get things rolling. All right, here we are. It is seed germination time, and this is the setup I'm gonna be using. This is a nice, modest size system that's uh, made by VivoSun. There's a number of manufacturers that have these out there, and they are largely all the same. This is one that uh, I've done a number of batches of seeds with, and it's it served me very, very well. All right, the parts that it's made up of. So. There is a heated mat here that uh, comes with a controller, has a little temperature probe on there for monitoring the mat's temperature. There are two LED bars. These will fit right into the lid of the hydrodome very, very nicely. The hydrodome is vented, uh, not a must. I mean, you really can just crack the corner of one of these and let humidity out, but these are really nice. We have the cells. Each of these are designed to hold the rock wool that's been soaking over here, and then a basin pan. And the idea of the basin pan is not just for drips. Uh, we want to be maintaining high humidity while we're germinating, but we also don't want to overwater our cubes. We'll just rot out our seeds. This lets moisture wick up from the bottom and kind of keep our, our seeds as hydrated as they need to be without overdoing it. Okay. There is a little bit of prep that happens. You'll notice all of my rock wool is sitting inside water. Uh, rock wool does not come pH neutral. And so what you wanna do is draw up some water that's in the correct pH range for what you're growing. Let them soak. I let these soak typically, well, at least a day. Sometimes I'll do two just to be on the safe side. Where you're gonna take these, give them a gentle squeeze, and then get them throughout the cells. Okay, uh, I'm doing a small batch here. I only have eight cells out. I'm gonna go grab the seeds and then we will get those set into place. Here we are. This is what I'm gonna be planting in this set. I've got two exotic types of heirloom tomatoes. I've actually never grown these varieties. This is part of my experiment. And then I also have cilantro. Now, cilantro is actually kind of interesting. If we were planting outdoors, cilantro is a really great companion plant for tomatoes because it drives off a number of flies that have a tendency to lay their eggs on tomato leaves. Um, not nearly as much of an issue indoor hydroponically, but I've been told by several people that cilantro also will help keep off fruit flies, which you absolutely can get inside and fruit flies are drawn to the smell the tomato plants generate. So, you know what? We're gonna give those a go inside the tent as well. All right, our tomato varieties here, uh, Midnight Snacks and uh, Heirloom Blacks. Let's just see, I love tomatoes. I thought it'd be fun to do something I've never tried before. So when it comes to setting up our seeds, you'll notice that the Rockwool Cubes do have let me grab a fresh one here. There's a hole already there for your seed. Um, it works just fine, but in the squishing process, because you don't want these cubes totally full of water, they tend to disappear a little bit. So my favorite tool for the job is a screw. Uh, nothing really fancy here. Just gently burrow your way in and open up that hole again. Makes a nice, good, even target to get your seeds into and you're not going to tear apart the cube which is definitely helpful all right let's get a couple of these midnight snacks out i 
and just very gently drop that seed down into the opening and then make sure it goes down again that screw becomes really handy here and then just brush over the opening of the hole because we don't want our seeds receiving sunlight sunlight's beneficial after they've sprouted not before okay two more tomatoes and i'm going to put in four cilantro just a gentle little push down and then brush closed that rock wool okay all that's left to do is give these a light watering down in the pan so they want to wick up that moisture now from what I've been soaking in the rock wool, uh, I'm going to draw some fresh pH balanced water, no nutrients, just water. Once that's set, I'm going to close this up and we're going to get the heater set. All right, so this begs the question, how much water do you put in this thing? What I like to do is I pour in one of my central holes and let it wick out. When I finally poured enough, that you can see water peeking up through these little central holes, not flooding into it, but just kind of peeking up. That's when you know you have exactly the right amount. Well, it looks like I poured just exactly enough. I can see these outer ones at the far extremes. I got water poking up. You can kind of give your cells a little bit of push and you can see the water jiggle right through those little tiny central holes. Now, this doesn't mean I don't water it while they're germinating, but this is a good set point. Always keep an eye on your germinating seeds. Make sure that this rock wool feels moist, not saturated, and definitely not dry. You'll kill off your seedlings really fast that way. Okay, last couple steps here. Hydrodome goes on. Even though it's not necessary at this point, I do go ahead and just put the LED strips in place. I'm not going to turn them on until I see my seedlings poking out from the rock wool, but it is just nice to have them in place. And then when it comes to the heater, we just run the thermal probe in. Little suction cups nice for just kind of keeping the cord from running off on you if you can get it to stick it doesn't always sometimes i'll stick it down with a little blue painter's tape something like that and then the probe itself you really want it stuck down next to one of your rock, rock wool cubes this way it helps you ensure that you're not overheating the seeds themselves if you just leave it up in the air you gain air temperature which is not always useful but the power cord for the heat mat is going to come right into here. And then this gets plugged into power. All right, the last step here, we just need to set the temperature for our heat mat. So I'm going to press and hold this button here. It's 79 degrees. Tomatoes should really be about 75 Fahrenheit. So set it there, press and hold the gear once more, and it's going to start winding its way up. All right that is about it now it's all about time so we're going to set these to the side let them do their thing check them over the next couple days as soon as we see green poking out of that rock wool then we're going to go ahead and turn on the leds in this case we have an inline controller right here and it is a little bit hard to see on camera because it's tiny but depending on the color that the interface lights up it's either going to be on a 12 or 18 light cycle so that would mean 12 hours light, 12 hours dark, or 18 hours dark, or sorry, 18 hours light and six hours of dark. We want it to be on 18.6. So let's see how they grow. Okay, there we go. Our seeds are growing quite nicely now and we're gonna keep an eye on them until they're 100% ready to be transplanted into our system. 
In the time being, make sure that you hit the links below and check out Growy's webpage and sign up for their newsletter that's going to get you an extra 5% off any purchases that you make. Also in the notes below are links to each of the things that I used in this episode. So if you use any of the links to make a purchase, I may earn a small commission and that goes a long way to helping me continue the channel and making new content. If you find what I'm making valuable, please like and subscribe below and by all means comment. I love hearing from folks. Ask your questions there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also in the description is that link to Muckles Incorporated where you can get your own planted all garb. We've got our hockey hoodies, our t-shirts and hats there. And those sales also do help support the channel. So please like and subscribe below and hit that little bell so when the next video comes out you get a notification. Until then, make sure you plant it all.